welcome back to Pink Turtle Soaps. For today, I'm making another throwback soap. Um, if you missed it, the month of August is where I bring back designs or fragrances that have been requested or were best sellers. And right now I'm working on soaps for August, so this is a throwback fragrance. The scent that I'm using smells just like Britney Spears' Hidden Fantasy perfume. It's a very nice scent if you're looking for something a little bit different or a little bit unique. Um, something that stands out from the general feminine type soaps or fragrances. I almost made this soap for last August, but I was still a little bit scared because when I first made this soap, it took me for a ride, let me tell you. It seized up my soap immediately. If you don't know what seizing is, it's basically when you add the fragrance oil to your um, soap oils and you basically get Play-Doh, uh, soap on a stick. I had to throw that entire batch away um, and then I reordered the fragrance oil and tried for the second batch, which went a little bit better because I knew what to expect, but it was still a very difficult fragrance to work with. So, um, that was another reason why I chose this fragrance was to give you guys a video to show you how to work with a fragrance that will either rice or seize up your soap pretty much. The whole batch will be... Uh, very thick. I'm still a teensy bit scared, but we got this. The fragrance is definitely worth the trouble because it smells so good. So for the very first step, I'm going to go ahead and add the lye water to my oils and blend it together. So I hardly blended this at all. I blended it just so the lye and the oils weren't separated. I'm anticipating that the fragrance is going to accelerate the soap quite a bit, possibly even seize it, so I want my soap to start out as fluid as possible. So I'm gonna split off a small amount of soap into this smaller container here, and I, that's gonna be left unscented because the fragrance oil does, it, uh, it does discolor, I almost said accelerate. It does discolor a little bit, so I don't want for this little container over here to turn a weird shade of brown. I'm gonna add just a little bit of titanium dioxide to it. And then if I need to add more, I can. For the larger container, I'm gonna use really red, which I'm almost out of. It's definitely the best red uh, pigment or colorant that I've used, and it's from Nurture Soap. I'm gonna add some into there. But after this soap cures, this red will probably turn sort of a deep cherry color just because of the fragrance oil discoloration. I'm gonna go ahead and mix these up really quick. Okay, so again, I did my very best to avoid over blending this with a stick blender just because of what might happen with the fragrance oil. All right, let's see how bad this is. Okay, there's some rising happening, which I expected. I'm gonna try to incorporate this fragrance oil as much as possible by hand because I believe it was when I used the stick blender that made it like really rock hard. I may actually go ahead and do an in the pot swirl because I'm afraid that this is gonna thicken up way too much to try to do a drop swirl with the white. I don't know, we'll see how uh, how thick the stick blender makes this. Okay, so that didn't give me near as much trouble. It's still um, really thick, but it's still fluid. But I did like the idea of doing a drop or a in the pot swirl, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that, especially since this white has thickened up quite a bit. I think what made the difference this time is I let my oils and my lye water set for uh, about four to five hours. It reached about 75 degrees Fahrenheit, so definitely a lot cooler than I normally soap at. So I'm gonna go ahead and start pouring this in. You can see how those two colors just sort of marble together. That's what an in the pot swirl will help you achieve if you're trying to uh, go for a marbled look rather than like a drop swirl definitely do it in the pot swirl. I'm going to pat it down really quick just to even it out. That way I can see which part of the loaf might need a little bit more soap. You can see now how thick it is and this is nothing compared to how thick it was the last time that I worked with this fragrance oil. So either they reformulated it but I think it's most likely the fact that I worked at a, a cooler temperature this time. These colors definitely remind me of bacon. So, speaking of bacon, I will be making a bacon soap. Um, I'm doing a bacon festival here in Middle Tennessee in a few months. 
If you want to see the bacon soap, uh, let me know. I'll make a video. If not, then I'll skip over it, but just let me know if you want to see me make bacon soap. I'm going to scrape out my bucket into these little cupcake liners here. Anytime I have extra soap left over, I uh, add it to these little silicone cupcake liners. And then I like to give those out as samples. Sometimes I like to just throw these little soaps into an order just randomly. Just as a little surprise to my customers. Sometimes I use them here for my own family. They're just nice to have. They're like the perfect size for a sample soap. So that's why I like to use up my scrap. I don't want to say scrap, but my extra soap. I like to utilize that to make sample soaps. After I scrape out these buckets, I'm going to move over and start working on the piping, which is going to be a really pretty light pink. And then there's going to be little heart embeds on top, and I'll show you those before I start doing the piping. Before I get started on the piping, I wanted to show you the little embeds that are going to go on top. These are soap, and I used biodegradable silver glitter on the inside. Let me see if my camera... There we go. It almost looks like glass hearts and the glitter is actually suspended throughout the heart so it looks really cool and really sparkly and every single bar is going to get one. So it's actually been about two days. You may notice that the loaf is a lot shorter than it usually is and that's because I've already cut off a few bars for a TikTok video. But we still have plenty of soap here to cut up to check out the inside. And I sort of joked about the inside looking like bacon. And right now it still does look a lot like bacon. But the fragrance oil is going to discolor this red in the inside the bar. So it's going to be more of a cherry color, like a deep black cherry color almost at the end of the cure time. So keep that in mind. Cut through it, it cuts like a dream. It's not too thick, but it's just right. So that's what the inside of it looks like and you can see why I joke saying it looks like a piece of bacon. And you've got the little soap heart up here and you can barely see it. There's some white glitter and some pink glitter on the piping here, both of which are biodegradable. Any glitter that I use on top is going to be biodegradable. You don't have to worry about harming the environment if you use one of my soaps because I make sure to only buy biodegradable glitters. So that's what this bar looks like. I'll cut off another one for you. And if you have a TikTok, be sure to head over and check out Peak Turtle Soaps. It's still a fairly new uh, profile. So there's only like six or seven videos, but I'm doing my best to put up at least two every week. So we'll see how that goes. Also forgot to tell you what color I used for the piping. I used a little bit of Love Poem from Nurture Soap and some titanium dioxide and that's what gave us this really neutral pink shade. I think it looks perfect on the soap and just the color palette overall looks really good. Let's go ahead and cut up the rest of the bars. If you'd like to claim a bar for yourself, these will be available at pinkturtlesoaps.com August 1st at 8 a.m. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week.